Did you know, in December of 1914, British and German soldiers along the Western Front called a temporary truce, gathered in the battlefield, and celebrated Christmas. But before we get into today's facts, welcome to Random Facts with Neil, the channel that explores the world of random, fun, interesting, useless facts. Now, if you love learning new useless stuff the same way we do, be sure to hit the subscribe button right there, turn on all notifications, then meet us back here for every new video, and we'll learn some new random stuff together. All right, ready? Let's go. Fact number one. When you think about World War I, if you're like me, the first thing I think of is soldiers engaged in trench warfare, dug down in some muddy hole in just awful conditions. Pretty primitive seeming war, right? Well, not necessarily. Now, when you think about air combat, you tend to think of other wars like World War II, maybe the Korean War, the Cold War, dogfighting in movies like this. However, air combat was an enormous part of World War I as well. So much so that did you know the most famous fighter pilot in history fought in World War I? And I'll bet you've heard of him. Manfred von Richthofen, also known as the Red Baron, was considered the top flying ace of the war. Now, long before he fought Snoopy, the Red Baron was making quite a name for himself as a member of the German Air Force's Flying Circus where he flew a variety of different albatross aircraft, all of which he had painted bright red in order to scare the out of his enemies when they saw him coming. And you know what? It worked. During a 19-month period from 1916 to 1918, the Red Baron scored a confirmed 80 air victories. 80. 20 of those coming in one month, in bloody April of 1917. Now, while the Red Baron does not hold the record for most air victories by a fighter pilot, because of how short his career was and the rate at which he scored his victories, the Red Baron is considered to be one of the greatest fighter pilots of all time. And what is his legacy? Middle of the road, frozen pizza. Fat number two, dogs. You love dogs, I love dogs. We all love dogs. Now, in addition to being great companions for humans, dogs also help humans by providing a variety of different services, some of which are vital to some people's day-to-day -day life. And this was also true during the war. Did you know that dogs played a vital military role during World War I? Now, among the variety of many jobs that dogs had during the war, some of the most important were things like helping haul machine gun carts and supply carts. Dogs were used as messengers, having messages strapped to their bodies, which they then sometimes had to carry across battlefields under a hail of gunfire. Dogs would help medics find injured soldiers on the battlefield so they could be tended to. And they even helped rid the trenches of rats so they, they were more livable for the soldiers. Now, of all the roles that dogs played, possibly the most important was that of a morale booster. In fact, the Red Baron, who we just talked about, was quoted as saying, there is no more beautiful being in creation than that of a true Danish hound, to which he was referring to his own little lap dog, Moritz, which he would sometimes take up in his plane with him. So it's kind of funny. Now, while it's hard to determine exactly how many dogs were in service during the war, it's thought that at a given time, there were up to 2,000 dogs being used by European forces during the war. And according to the Imperial War Museum, they believe over 16 million different animals were used in some form of service or capacity by both sides during the war. So, man, my dog definitely would not have made the cut for this, seeing as she can't handle the sound of fireworks two towns over during the 4th of July. So she'd be out. Fact number three. Now, like most wars when coming to an end, one of the most common practices is to build a memorial of some kind, and uh, World War I is no different. Now, because this war was fought on just about every continent around the world, there are a number of different memorials of varying shapes and sizes, anywhere from plaques to walls to statues to buildings. Um, you get the idea. However, did you know 
the largest war memorial of any kind in the world is a road, and it's from the First World War. That's right. Australia's Great Ocean Road, which runs on the southwest coast of Victoria, was built over a 13-year period after the war ended from 1919 to 1932. Now, while this was a great way for Australia to commemorate the war, the idea was also to give returning soldiers work. So, over 3,000 men, mostly returning soldiers, are responsible for building this road, which is carved out of the cliffs in Victoria. Which is pretty cool. Alright, what's the shitty dad joke we're ending this one with? It is some bad pun, I know, with uh, memorials, like, monuments, something like that, right? Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> God, I'm so good. Fact number four. When we're talking about tanks, you obviously think of this. But also the word tank has gotten to the point where it's interchangeable with any sort of seemingly behemoth, impenetrable, unstoppable vehicle or whatever, you know, you know, whatever. Now, the term tank comes from World War I, but the origin is not what you think. Did you know the tank got its name out of an attempt at secrecy? Now, what do I mean by this? Well, tanks were originally called land ships, which is a dumb name, but rather than call them land ships, which you gotta admit is a pretty accurate description at the time, British forces wanted to keep secret the presence, the use, and the location of these land ships, so in all communications, they referred to them as tanks, i.e. water tanks. So, any intercepted communication by enemy forces would read this and assume just another benign piece of equipment, as in a water tank. So, the term tank was continuously used throughout the rest of the war, and the name stuck. So, now they're called tanks. So, thanks for that. Oh my god, it's getting worse. What are we doing? Fact number five. Now, this one was a real mind blower when I learned it. And, uh... Got me thinking about when I was a kid, and me and my buddies would go off, and we would play war in the woods with our BB guns, and occasionally <clears throat> we'd stumble across each other hiding, and we'd yell for mercy so the other wouldn't shoot, wouldn't shoot you. Um, apparently, though, mercy occasionally comes up in real battles as well. Now, I'm specifically talking about an incident that involves a young British private. Uh, his name was Private Henry James Tandy, and he was fighting in France in September of 1918, when he happened upon a wounded, unarmed German soldier who he had in his sights and dead to rights. Now, reportedly, the two men were so close in proximity that they could make eye contact and even read each other's facial expressions. It was at this point that Tandy decided, and would go on to say later, he just couldn't bring himself to shoot an unarmed man. So, he decided to take mercy on this German soldier and lowered his rifle. To which the German soldier even acknowledged this and gave him a nod of gratitude and the two men went on their way. Now, as for Tandy, he would go on to some fame and notoriety, becoming the most decorated British private of the war. However, the German soldier whose life he chose to spare would go on to somewhat greater fame and notoriety. Ugh. Did you know the life of Adolf Hitler was spared during World War I? That's right. Now, because of Tandy's fame and notoriety, he was featured in a number of different publications at that time, which is reportedly how Hitler was able to identify him as the man that spared his life on the battlefield. Reportedly, Hitler even clipped his picture out of one of these publications and kept it. So... I mean, talk about all-time regrets, and <laughs> I regret my college major, let alone, ugh. Okay, let's recap today's facts. Fact number one. Possibly the most famous fighter pilot in history, the Red Baron, fought in World War I. Fact number two. Dogs played a vital military role during the war. Fact number three. The largest war memorial of any kind in the world is actually a road. Fact number four, tanks got their name out of an attempt at secrecy. And fact number five, 
Adolf Hitler's life was spared during World War I. Okay, that's it. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Hope you got something out of today's video. In addition to subscribing below, please be sure to check out our social media platforms for more fun random facts. This has been Random Facts with Neil, and now we know what we didn't know. <laughs>